All right, guys. So today we're going to check out the Clear Alpha headphones that come in at $199. Now, this is a very interesting pair of headphones for me, and it definitely falls into that category of headphones that are going to be compared or competing with uh, the Sony and the Bose noise canceling headphones out there because this pair does have active noise canceling. And if you're not familiar with the company Clear, they're known for making some pretty impressive audio products. They've made some of my favorite earbuds buds. I've checked out some really impressive speakers when I've went out to CES. They try to push the boundaries uh, when it comes to doing something a little bit different. And let's be honest, you kind of have to do that uh, if you're going to compete with the Sony and the Bose of the worlds out there because they usually have the market like surrounded. They're more marketed. They're just more well-known. So we're going to see what this pair has to offer. We're going to see if it does compare with the Bose and the Sony and see if it's worth the $199 price tag. So first off, let's just go ahead and jump into the build quality and the design of the headphones. They are super well built, although they're all pretty much plastic. Uh, they do have really comfortable memory foam ear pads. Uh, they have both button and swipe gestures as far as the controls go. And I am happy to say that you have control over everything out of the box. So that is a huge plus, uh, but they do work with Clear's app, which is the Clear Plus app. Uh, this allows you to keep the earbuds updated. It allows you to have some different EQ options. You also have really good control over both the noise canceling and the transparency mode. And it also has direct virtual, basically like spatial audio. Now we've tested this out in some previous products uh, and this is some of the best spatial audio that you're going to get uh, compared to like Apple's spatial audio that they have because a lot of it is generic. A lot of it really doesn't do much, uh, but the direct virtual works very, very well. If this is something that you're into. Again, I've said this before, I feel like spatial audio is better for things like movies and videos and games, but I just find it kind of, you know, gimmicky when it comes to music. So I generally don't use it when it comes to listening to music, uh, but it is nice that it's out there for those who like to take advantage of that. Now talking about the noise canceling and the transparency mode, uh, this is done very well on these headphones. The noise canceling is super strong. I would not say that it is up to the Sony or Bose level. It doesn't have that vacuum tight feel uh, like the Bose products have. I found it to be extremely comfortable while using. Now the noise canceling does not affect the audio as much as it does in some of the other headphones, but I felt like it did a really good job of blocking out like the lower tones, like engine noises, AC units, and things like that. But it also kind of took it up a notch and does a really good job of blocking out people talking. So from a noise canceling standpoint, this is above most headphones, but still below the Bose and the Sony. Now the transparency Transparency mode on these work extremely well. Now this pair also has basically like a conversation mode. So if somebody comes up to talk to you, uh, you just cover your ear cup and it allows the sounds to be picked up basically where it can switch into that transparency mode real quick. You can carry on your conversation and then when you move your hands off, it just goes back into the normal listening mode that you were in. Now some of the features that these have that I feel like kind of makes these stand out, obviously it has really good noise canceling, but these are also high res audio certified. Now this is while using them in wired mode. These are not high res wireless certified, so do keep that in mind. It has aptX adaptive playback, which like I've said before is one of my favorite Bluetooth codecs. Uh, it just kind of adapts and does a lot of the thinking for you to make sure you're getting the best sound quality you can get based off what you're listening to and the situation situation that you're listening to them in. And then again, it does have that direct virtuo spatial audio feature, which again, mixing that with some of these other features, I think kind of helps these stand out amongst some of the other headphones we've tested. Now, as far as the options available, I have the midnight black version here, uh, but it also comes in a midnight blue and a stone. So you do have a few different options to choose from there. Now these are using 40 millimeter ironless drivers that it says has a bold and articulate sound. And we'll talk about the sound uh, a little bit more in just a minute. But when it comes to what you're getting inside the box, it comes with a pretty nice flat hard case, which I would really just compare to what Sony and Bose has to offer. Uh, this also allows you to keep all the other accessories inside, which is the airline adapter. Uh, it also comes with a three and a half millimeter headphone cable, and it comes with that USB-C cable, which is what 
you're going to use to charge these. And speaking of the charging, battery life is pretty impressive on this pair. Now, we've seen better on some other headphones, but on a full charge, you're going to get about 35 hours of use. And if it is dead, it has a very nice fast charging feature where a 10-minute charge will get you about four hours of use. And again, I find that kind of handy because I don't always make sure that my headphones are fully charged. So if I'm heading out the door, my headphones happen to be dead. Uh, it's nice that I can get four hours out of a quick 10 10 minute charge. Now, if you're going to use these for taking phone calls, it's using Qualcomm's CVC technology, which is basically clear voice capture. It's trying to focus in on what you're saying because it also has the beam forming mics, and it's also trying to block out a lot of your surroundings. And I think this headphone does a really decent job at this, uh, but you guys can be a judge by listening to a test here. So here is a mic test using the clear alpha, and I think these do a really good job of picking up my voice. I think it sounds fairly natural for the most part, but this is what it would sound like if you were to take a call. And so now here's the mic test with the crowd noise being played, which you can hear here. And so this is what it would sound like if you were to take a call in public. So now let's talk about the sound. And the sound, for the most part, I feel is very well-rounded in this pair. And what I mean is it sounds good across all genres. Uh, the bass is not overwhelming, but it is punchy. Uh, the treble is not harsh, but it is bright enough to bring out a lot of the details. And the mids, I feel like, sound great. Now, because the bass is pretty punchy in these, it does give these a slight warm sound. Uh, and that warmth, when you add it with the mids and the treble, basically means that Trouble's not going to be harsh, uh, and it also means that the mids, like the vocals, sound a little bit more natural than they do in the Bose and the Sony. So the mids are where I felt like these stood out the most compared to the other ones. Uh, the bass I was a huge fan of, but I do think if you're uh, somebody that likes that subwoofer type sound, if you're a bass head, you're probably going to feel like these are lacking a little bit. But it doesn't mean that these don't have bass. I just think it's a tighter punch, especially if you're going to compare these to the Sonys, where I feel like the Sonys have a little bit more of a bloated bass and I think that's what a lot of consumers uh, like in their sound. And so another thing that makes that interesting is the sound stage and the sound imaging. I felt like I was in a large room. Now it doesn't sound, you know, open like a pair of open back headphones, but I would find it to be on par with the Bose and the Sonys. But I am going to say if you switch it into that Dirac mode so that you're getting that spatial audio, it really does open these up a lot more and it makes it sound like you're in a much more open environment. But the problem is I just don't like you using this mode while listening to music. So it really just kind of depends on your personal preference. If you like that spatial sound, you are going to get a little bit more of an open feel compared to the way that they sound with that direct mode turned off. So if I'm going to grade these into the different genres, I think if you listen to pop and hip hop mainly, I would give these an eight. Again, I wouldn't give it anything higher than that because it doesn't have that subwoofer or bass head type appeal to them. Uh, if you mainly listen to rock and metal, I would also give these an eight. And that's because if I listen to rock or metal, I do like a brighter treble so that I can hear the cymbals crashing a little bit more. So, you know, I still feel like it's a solid eight here. But if you listen to easy listening, another thing, because I go back to saying the mids sound excellent on this pair, I would give them an eight here. And if you're gonna use them for media, if you're gonna listen to movies or videos or games, this is where I would give these a seven because they only have Bluetooth 5.1. You're not getting like the latest Bluetooth technology and there's no gaming mode to switch them into to try to cut down any of that lag. So my overall rating on this pair is a solid eight. Uh, I just feel like this is a really good competitor and a really good alternative to the Bose and the Sonys. These come in at a much lower price tag, and I don't really feel like you're sacrificing a lot. I mean, the only thing I think if you're going to compare these to the Bose and the Sony is you're not going to get the noise canceling that those offer. But the sound quality that you're getting and the features that you're getting, I definitely think warrant the $200 price tag. And I think if you keep an eye on these, these will probably, you know, kind of fluctuate and go on sale quite a bit. I would say maybe between $150 to $200. And if you can nab it for anything, you know, around $150, I consider these to be a steal because you're getting a well-built headphone with a lot of nice features, a really nice case, excellent noise canceling, and audio quality that, again, I think is competing with the higher price brands, but in a different way. I think the mids on these stand out. So if you like vocals and you like the details of you know certain guitar tones and things like that, uh, this pair kind of separates itself 
from some of the others. But guys, that wraps up my video on the clear alpha active noise canceling headphones. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for checking out all the other videos. And as always, make sure to stay tuned for more.